welcome to Space News! I'm Braden. I'm Zell. I'm Dan. Uh, Dan wants to drop the introduction since it says our names on the screen. Uh, but, you know, that's a debate for the, another time because we're here on the break for Space News! Space Dan, news. not name debate. Sure. Uh, first off, this has been, uh, you know all over everyone's feeds uh nasa is launching a mission basically we've seen the outcome of armageddon and we don't want to <laughs> live it leave it up to nasa to have to uh bring in riggers teach them how to be astronauts land them on an asteroid drill it fill it with some nukes and blow it up uh, potentially be uh contract space madness yes <laughs> that's so, always a possibility so what the plan is is they have this asteroid that's the size of a football stadium and they are going to launch an interceptor i think it's the size of a golf cart if i remember correctly and they're mm -hmm. going to see if that with given enough time if they can change the trajectory of a massive earth ending event asteroid impact by just changing its course just a little bit the uh one of the best parts about uh, space news and about astronomy and science in general are the great lengths that scientists will go to have pretty great acronyms for their projects. Uh, for example, <laughs> this one is titled Double Asteroid Redirection Test, or DART. DART. Oh, nice. <laughs> so I, I guess it, it all depends what the asteroid's made up of, of how easy it would be to drill. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they're not they're they're not 100 percent sure. I mean, they're not drilling into anything essentially. It's like they're pretty much just going to um, slam, into slam into it. Like uh, the dart is aiming for what they're the, this uh, small little thing that's a, technically a moonlit, M O O N L E T. Um, that's about like Braden mentioned about the size of a football stadium, and so it's set to reach this target that's about 6.8 million miles from Earth uh in september of next year uh they don't the funny thing is that they don't know that much about the actual object itself they only know like you can't directly astronomers aren't able to directly see it on telescopes and things like this but they're able to kind of yeah um just like the the reflection of light that they're able to identify these two objects like orbiting each other and so once imagine if there, this if this crashed they're like they're like this shouldn't have happened but somehow we've changed the trajectory and now it's coming for earth <laughs> it wants payback <laughs> we, we knock it into into our orbit yeah it's um yeah so they're just going to fly this thing into it uh it, like the 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 golf cart essentially is going to slam into it at about like their calculations or it should be about fifteen thousand miles per hour it's twenty four thousand one hundred and forty kilometers so it's four miles it's it's six kilometers per second <laughs> see now i've always thought of like i remember like being a kid and watching like armageddon and thinking like wouldn't it make more sense to like to like if that was happening to like leave some like nuclear bombs in space and then just blow it up blow a couple up in unison like as it's going to just absolutely change its course i guess the risk is you don't want to blow it up because you don't want to have hurtling like tons of little you stuff. The, you don't want the shotgun effect. Yeah. Um, the other thing I always thought of as a kid is like now that we have the up like we we freaking landed crafts on an asteroid. Why wouldn't you land something with some sort of like top blaster? So once it lands on the asteroid, it like th thrusters shoot up, right? And you just thrust it off somewhere. Well, it seems this. The, the amount of energy in a craft that's going like six kilometers a second, I think, would be more than I any guess type so. yeah. of thrust. It's also cooler. Like, let's admit, it's way cooler. <laughs> it's way Just cooler. Slamming it in. Yeah, I think the the point of this test is to see if they can actually just redirect it. Like, how you can um, essentially they're going to smash into uh, the moonlit called Dimorphos, which orbits a larger body called Didymos, and they're going to watch uh, how the like if the orbit decays and how the orbit changes after the impact of the craft. So you'd be able to kind of get a a guesstimate about like how or you know be able to model better how we could potentially uh affect the the trajectory of a meteor that would be heading towards earth like how long you would have how great you know we don't have that stuff to kind of ex experiment with on earth so 
to see if it's actually feasible. It should be pretty neat. Yeah, that's pretty it, cool. It, it is a it's a it's a really cool uh, space news. This is some more cool space news. We're finally getting to the bottom of Mars in the sense that we're starting to look under the surface. Uh, we're peering under the under the the skirt of Mars for the first time. Uh, <laughs> With, uh, you know, using a, a seismo, seismometer, is that what it's called? Seismometer. Seismometer, that's the one. Yeah. Or seismometer, um, I guess you could say. Seismometer, I, yeah. it's also cool. Yeah, like, it sounds cooler. So we're, we're using it um, to see the makeup of Mars, you know, what ro- went wrong with our Mars colonies and how we can uh, improve them in the future. Yep, it's, <laughs> this one is named <laughs> Seismic yep. Experiment for Interior Structure, or SACE. Yeah. It's going down pretty it. deep too, like 200 meters or something. Uh, that's that's about as yeah, I think that's about um, what they're estimated things like. The further the further down that they can, they say that their readings go down. It's like the more inaccurate it becomes because right. of course, yeah. Uh, the land the this lander the ins the, the equipment is on the lander uh, inside, and the instruments that it has on there. Uh, measured the ambient vibrations in the ground, which are actually caused by the winds that flow over the surface of the planet. And that helped them to figure out what is underneath. So um, while analyzing the patterns of the waves, these were consistent with uh, what they kind of guess is two dense layers of rock. So probably basalt or um, with a thinner or less dense layer of material in the middle. So probably sedimentary is their guess. Uh, basically think Jurassic Park we're looking we're gonna find fossils Jurassic, velociraptor fossils by shotgun they have, the earth they have a shotgun yeah <laughs> shotgun same, same thing you've seen Jurassic fire. Park yeah same same shoot it down <laughs> and then they t- have to tap the TV screen to make it show yeah. up come on oh what I do what I touch <laughs> I mean I don't think they shotgun anything to the point <laughs> it's like you're more like you're ringing a bell or something what? and then yeah, they're- they're shooting frequencies into it, seeing how it reverberates, and so that you can kind of deduce what material is down yeah, there. Yeah, like we said, okay. same, same, but different. Same, same, but different. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they're shooting it's more the different than the same, but yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> same, uh, same, but different. This is, you know, like, I, I'm i so excited for the James Webb to go up, and I think a little, I think something that doesn't get talked about enough is that, you know, we always talk about, like, y- you know, the images coming out from this thing and like how advanced it is from what we have now. What we don't talk about is that this thing will be capable of detecting life on planets within 20, like in a 20 hour runtime of like basically scanning a planet. At the low end, 20 hours of transit time. So studying the transit of a planet, like what's orbiting either its moon or whatever, 20 hours minimum up to 200. But yeah, the the most powerful space telescope we've yeah. ever. Yeah, um, the astronomer Th- Thomas Michael Evans, uh, who is from the Max Planck Institute for Astronomy in Germany, put together a preprint paper that you actually can read online uh, using uh, the example of Trappist One E, which everybody really liked. Trappist. Um, we talked yeah. about pretty popular, um, a planet that has a very likely due to like the. Uh, the anal- <laughs> like analyzing its atmospheric kind of print fingerprint uh, from what we know about it, it has a perhaps a very likely having moisture on the planet or something an atmosphere that resembles Earth. So he put together a paper and kind of worked out how long it might take the uh, the James Webb Space Telescope to detect uh, chem- you know compounds like methane and carbon dioxide within the atmosphere. And he said, yeah. Uh, in in his calculations, he's saying probably like within, you know, low end 20 hours, somewhere to 200 hours, maybe to get a proper reading, depending on factors of how, you know, how cloudy the atmosphere is or whatever, like what, if, if stuff goes and moves in front of the planet, however, the we positioning. Be, there's, thing, a, so. there's a chance that within the next year from this space news that we're reading another space news that says James Webb telescope, telescope detects life on another planet. Signs of life, <laughs> potential signs of life. Yeah, so, yeah. They sh- if the if the signs point to similar conditions to Earth, like atmospheric makeup and stuff, then yes, then possibility is out there. Super cool. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, it, big... it, it launched in December, so God, I hope yeah. nothing goes wrong. <laughs> well, I hope they don't delay it any more than yeah. they, they have. Yeah, once it goes up there, it's going to be rad. And I, I, I would be interested to see like how long the line is on that thing because you know how uh, institutes and, and organizations kind of book up time on these types of telescopes and stuff. Oh. And I wonder how long it is. Like I, I'm sure it has just like 800 pages of just stuff that it's going to be doing, and I'd, it'd be kind of neat to just go through that and see like what they're doing. But I don't know where you'd find. I wonder how long we can get that document. Find out. What were you going to say, Zell? What was I going to say? Oh, it's yeah. December 22nd is potential launch date. Woo. So it's coming up real soon. But, like, they've env they have envisioned this telescope for, like, years, like 13, 14 years. They have they were hoping to build it and get it up there. And delays and miscalculations on how technical it was to build have pushed it this far. So, I mean, they don't want anything to happen after all this time. So chances of it actually going on the 22nd have to be like perfect conditions for them to yeah. take the risk. I'm not going to hold my breath saying it's going to launch on the 22nd, but like soon. Uh, soon. Very soon. Sooner rather than later. Uh, last thing we got for space news. Um, you know, in our dreams of terraforming Mars, we have come up with a, a kooky s plan uh, and that is to make an artificial magnetic field using science and magnets. <laughs> Science. <laughs> so we're gonna terraform Mars using magnets. Well, it would potentially make it more. Uh, it would make it easier to terraform uh, since Mars does not have a magnetic field uh, right. comparable to Earth or at all, uh, like Earth does. Um, and and it that, would be... like that protects us from cosmic rays from turning into the exactly. Fantastic Four and, and, and whatnot. Yep. And yep. ours is generated by a dynamo effect in the Earth's core. So the uh, you know the convection of the iron alloys generated within the um, you know the Earth's geomagnetic field. And then um, I thought that one part of the one part of the write up about this is they're saying that you can't you can't jump stars jump start Mars's core um, like Earth like that. We can't, and I, and we like, can't drill I, to the I've center. I've seen it done. It, I, they haven't seen the movie The Core. Yeah, the, you drill they, down to the bottom into the core and you launch a bunch of nukes and, and th you that restart, starts the core. Yeah, you restart the core. So we're talking about um, their plan essentially was to uh, the new one is to. So I guess they wrote off the idea of launching a nuke into the center of Mars, um, which which they haven't whatever. tried, which is so tried. crazy, yeah. crazy to us. So they, but maybe that's the backup plan. So you know, the, if the, whatever they're they're planning out right now, which is to essentially uh, place a, um, it's like to place a uh, some type of uh, ionizing particle device on a death Phobos. Ray. Yeah. Basically. Yes. <laughs> I, I, maybe. Yes. <laughs> and accelerating them to create a plasma torus along the orbit of Phobos, which orbits around Mars pretty quickly, closer than its other uh, its other orbiting body. And so you would create just kind of like a, you'd have a magnetic field there to, to kind of shunt off a lot of the uh, cosmic radiation and stuff that bombards the planet now. And it would make it really difficult for uh, us to, you know, for life as we know it to exist. I, I'm going to go ahead and say that, like, it makes sense that we're making these plans for Mars because uh, if if we can do it to Mars, then you can extrapolate that. Okay. Like we did it here. We can do it anywhere else. And it's, you know, so it, it's definitely the first hurdle to tackle. We're, and we're a long ways away from tackling. It's still all theoretical, but like, you know, we have first man mission being planned there. So like, you know, and then in within this decade, so um, who knows what so, we'll see in the future. So pretty much what they're trying to do is they're going to like, charge up phobos and use its ro like fast rotation around mars to create an artificial like a force field is that what we're talking about here uh yeah yeah so how, yeah. how much energy and would you need to put into i i don't think it's gone that far i mean it's really in the concept stage the, the scientists that came up with this idea were kind of like this is just an idea they're kind of like, high is, this is yeah <laughs> so high. um you know they're fresh <laughs> off their morning coffee and they're like hey yeah. you know what you know what would be cool it's like it's like I just watched the core, and that wouldn't work. But however. I got another idea. It's gonna sound crazy at first, but um, uh, that's it that's for space cool. news. Um, you know, that's all we got. Enjoy the rest of the show, and as we always say, keep those eyes.
To keep up to date with all things alien theorist theorizing, follow us across social media on Twitter, Instagram, Patreon, and Facebook. For updates on new videos and content on YouTube, don't forget to click like and subscribe and hit that notifications button to keep those eyes on the skies with alien theorists theorizing.